Welcome to Witness Wednesday, where we share our stories of faith to empower you to share yours. I'm Melanie File, Associate Director of Evangelization at St. Dennis Parish in Madison, Wisconsin. And I have here with me today, Paul Francis, a good friend and one of our small group, our grow group leaders at St. Dennis. Hey, Paul. Hello, hello, Melanie. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. Yeah. So Paul has a story for us. Um, you have a story for us about the Eucharist kind of becoming real, becoming more real in your life. Yes, yes. I need to give a little background, I guess, first. Yeah. Um, and that's to say that uh, I was a United Methodist pastor for 32 years. I grew up um, as a Protestant. Um, my wife grew up as a Protestant. Um, and we got married 21 years ago. Um, and that marriage made uh, people in the United Methodist Church where I was pastor anxious because uh, she was a member of my parish, and that was uh, not trusted uh, very well. Okay. And so the church asked me to retire early, about 22 years ago. So we moved to Madison and looked looked for a church. That was a, a big part of what we were looking for, be, besides uh, me needing a job. Yes. Um, and we went probably for four years to different churches several different denominations in the Protestant church. And I, I finally asked Jane, my wife, could let's let's give St. Dennis a try. When I was pastor at the Monona Church, um, you know, the Methodist Church, uh, I was good friends with Del Clink, the pastor here then, and he was very helpful for me uh, personally. Um, taught me what, for example, what reconciliation and penance was re were really all about. But anyway, so we came here and to our amazement, uh, had more scripture in its worship than the Protestant church did, which was totally different than what I grew up thinking. Had more music and more, more places for people to sing and Eucharist every week. We decided to really search this out. And so we went to RCIA for, for the year and became a part of the parish life. And shortly after that, I don't know exactly when, this one particular Eucharist uh, just changed my life, I guess you could say. Uh, we were walking down the center aisle uh, and the choir was singing this song, A God Will Hold You in the Palm of His Hand. And I like that song. But all of a sudden though, I was holding my, my hands out like, like this and the minister placed the host in my, my hand and said, the body of Christ. And it just hit me out of the blue like, Christ is letting me hold him in the palm of my hand. And, and, and it just flipped. It's not just, the issue isn't just, um, me trusting God uh, in my relationship with God, but it, it, it is Christ trusting me. And it was clear in that action and in that gift of himself that Christ is trusting me to hold him, not just in the palm of my hand, but in my life, in my heart, in my head, in my hands, what I was doing, decisions I was making, and all of a sudden, the issue of my identity and my purpose, my usefulness to Christ that just made me feel so bad uh, that I had taken myself out of a position of being useful to Christ. No, it was was not true. And and I remember going home and, and working with that some more. Well, if I'm if I'm not pastor anymore, what what can I do? What can I do? That you can use and and jesus said to me just love it's just just love and after i got my wits about me again i i said i can do that i can do that i i can do that 
how I relate to people, what I say, you know, what I'm thinking. Um, and it was just so freeing. It was so liberating. It was so, um, it just, what got me was, what got me was not only that I'm now useful to Christ, um, that Christ wants me, Christ needs me, Christ loves me. It's such a marvel, it's such a unbelievable thing. It just took took my bad feelings about myself away um, and just sent me, just sent me with purpose again and uh, and possibility. Wonderful. So that's that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think what, one thing I've learned about the Eucharist is that in a similar way to Jesus reassuring you that I can use you even in your brokenness, Paul. Just okay. love. Just love. Yeah. Yeah. That That's the same story as all of us, is we come to the Eucharist broken. That's, God doesn't expect anything different of us, right? We don't need to come perfect. He's the one who perfects oh, us. Oh gosh, it's better if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's impossible anyway. Yeah. We could just lean into our who brokenness. Are who are we kidding? Yeah. yeah. Right. And we can't kid God. So what he wants us to do is just put that brokenness on the altar with his perfect sacrifice. He already... Acknowledge it. Yeah. Um, beyond that. And so at that moment when you received the Eucharist and you felt like he was trusting you to hold him. Yeah. That was a moment of healing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where you saw your true identity. Yeah. You're enough. Yeah. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants all of us to receive. Yes, yes. And he trusts us. No. So thanks for sharing the story. All right. <laughs> thanks for asking me. Your vulnerability gives us permission to be broken. And when we're broken, we just offer ourselves with Jesus in the sacrifice of the Eucharist. And the beautiful thing is he perfects that sacrifice and offers it with a sweet smelling aroma to the Father. Amen. Amen. If you have a story of faith that you wanna share, contact me at the email address listed on your screen.